everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast, Take Two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of your co-hosts, Michael Brandville. As always, I'm joined by Jay Gilbert. How you doing, Jay? Doing well, Michael. Thank you. So before we get into this week's fun episode, uh, just a quick shout out to our supporters and sponsors. Thank you to HypeBot.com and Bands in Town for all of your support for the Music yep. Biz Weekly Podcast. And of course, Bandzoogle.com, built by musicians for musicians. Bandzoogle is an all-in-one platform that makes it easy to build a beautiful website and EPK for your music. Bandzoogle powers the websites for tens of thousands of musicians around the world, from weekend warriors to Grammy winners. All the features you need for a professional website are already built in, including hosting and a custom domain name, dozens of fully customizable design templates, tools to sell your music and merch commission-free, commission-free crowdfunding and fan subscription features, mailing list tools to grow your fan list and send newsletters, of course, social media integrations, and amazing live tech support from their musician-friendly team seven days a week. So we put together a cool little offer with Banzoogle for you. Head over to Banzoogle.com, try it for free for 30 days, and when you register, use the promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY, all one word, MUSICBIZWEEKLY, and you'll get 15% off the first year of any subscription. And of course, DiscMakers.com, thank you so much. We know it's a digital world, but there's still an important rule for physical media for today's independent musician. Digital royalty payments can be so small that selling products like CDs, vinyl, t-shirts at gigs and online has become an important income generator. For every CD you sell at a gig or online, you might need roughly 3,000 streams to make the same amount of money. And that's a lot of streams. Our friends at Disc Makers are the place to go for your discs and other physical media, including vinyl, USB drives, and even t-shirts. So a cool little offer we put together for you with Disc Makers. Head over to discmakers.com, place an order for 100 or more CDs, and when you check out, use the promo code FREEBIZ, all one word, FREEBIZ, and you will save up to $150 in shipping costs. Build a stunning band website in minutes with Banzoogle. Go to Banzoogle.com to start your free 30-day trial and use the promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY to get 15% off the first year of any subscription. Um, we are flying solo today. Our guest had a last-minute cancellation. We'll get rescheduled for a couple months from now. So throwing around ideas, there wasn't really any, like, earth-shattering, groundbreaking music news in the last Fire. week. Yeah. It's not like Daniel Eck at Spotify said something else that pissed off the entire music sphere. Um, but, you know, throwing out ideas, I'm like, well, you know, we always have fun. Personally, we have fun talking about apps and websites and tools we yeah. use. And they always seem to get good response when we do those shows. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, I mean, you, you can do these, that type of a show every six months, every year because things are always changing. So yeah. today we're just going to go through what are the apps, what are the websites, what are the tools each of us use day in and day out. Yep. And it's funny because uh, as you mentioned, these things evolve and change all the time. Um, if you look back at one of our previous shows where we talked about this, you know, um, all of these things are different and new and changing and, and I'm discovering things. I mean, I, I find things sometimes that maybe have been around a little while, but um, are, you know, either getting better. Well, that's, or, that's the thing. You know, you might hear us repeat some of the same apps we've talked about before, but they're constantly getting, if they're established apps, they're constantly getting feature enhancements. And mm -hmm. sometimes that single feature enhancement makes the app so incredibly useful beyond what you were doing before. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you take the lead? Give us your first right. app website program. This, this one, before we get into kind of the real uh, 
kind of worker workhorse kind of uh, apps and platforms. I just found one that was just kind of fun that uh, it's been around a little bit, uh, a little bit, um, but it's called um, Forgotify. And Forgotify.com is a site kind of dedicated to the premise that there's roughly 60 million tracks now on the top DSPs, but almost a third of those have never been listened to once. 17 million of those have never been played once. So, so much for the long tail, right? Right. So what Forgotify does is you go to that site and it'll play you music that's never been listened to once. And it's also got some other uh, kind of add-ons, you know, like YouTube. You know, you can check out some YouTube videos that haven't been watched. But it's, I had a little, it's kind of a rabbit hole that you fall into. It's not that the music's bad. Um, it's just that, think about it, if you are a catalog artist and you have a lot of our, uh, albums and some deep album tracks, people may only be listening to the greatest hits, you know? It doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, but it, I fell into this thing and was really exploring and actually discovered some really cool stuff. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big productivity app website geek. I love productivity apps. I'm always looking for something to help streamline and become more efficient. Um, and, and to that point, one of the most used apps, and you know, I'm going based off of like, what's on the home screen of my iPhone? What's on the dock of my Mac? What's right there? What am I saving? What's always open? And it's also really important for me that it, ideally if I'm using an app, it's cross-platform, meaning I can have a version on my iPhone. I can have, and this is really important to me, an iPad optimized version. And what that just means is not I just the that. iPhone version that you double up, but I want a, an app that's designed to fit the iPad rotates with the iPad screen, but I also want a Mac version. So I've got it on my laptop as well, because I'm sure you would agree, we never know where we're gonna be when we have something come up and I want instant access to anything. So it's gotta be web-based, it's gotta be Mac-based, iPhone-based, it's gotta be iPad-based. Um, so the first app that I use extensively is a to-do manager. I cannot recommend enough getting yourself some form of a to-do manager. Yeah. I use Todoist. Um, again, cross-platform on everything on the Mac. It's got Windows versions. Um, but what's really important to me, because for the longest time, to-do apps were separate from your email app. You had your email, you lived in, and you had a to-do app that you lived in. And I'm sure like a lot of people for the longest time, my inbox was sort of a pseudo to-do list. Oh, I read the email. I'm not gonna file it. I'll keep it in the inbox because I gotta come back and do something with it. Right. Well, Todoist has integrations with many email apps, including Gmail. But I use um, AirMail on my Mac systems. And basically, I can open up an email, read that email, and just click the Todoist integration link in the email app and send that email to my to-do list, setting a due date, a due time, adding it to a project, all of this other stuff. And then I can file it away and get my inbox down to zero because I, I swear to God, for about the last two months, my inbox is almost always zero now yeah, because I, I can get this crap amazing. out of it, put it into a to-do app and say, okay, I need to, and I need to respond to this email in one week. I need to follow up and see, did they, have they given me the response in a week? Um, huge organizational time saver to be able to integrate email straight into Todoist. Now, Todoist integrates with all sorts of other apps out there, but that is by far the 
biggest integration that I've used and it has had the most impact on productivity of getting stuff into a to-do list yeah. and defining stuff by day and by project because you don't want to yeah. get wrapped up with a to-do list that's just one long list of everything. Yeah. You know, you got to be realistic and go, okay, I'm only going to get through seven or eight items today. So you just assign them based on that and move it t tomorrow, move it to next week. Yeah. Um, How long have you used app. it? Because you've, you've used a bunch of these different things over the years. We've talked about this. Have you, have you had this one for a while? Yeah, I've probably been on Todoist now for easily three, four, five years now. Um, it first started integrating with Gmail, just through the Gmail web app. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I moved out of Gmail because Gmail, and I'm only talking about back when I was using it, was kind of lacking on a lot of organizational and productivity features. And there's some great apps like Airmail that, that I love. It's yeah, got other cool that. features in it. Um, I used to use an app yeah. called uh, Newton for email that integrated with Todoist, but this combination of airmail and Todoist, I've been using for a few years now, and and do it's they just upgraded. I mean, regularly. I mean, are there oh yeah improvements to yes, it? yes. Todoist, Todoist is actually, and here's the cool thing. Yes, they do. They they just released a beta version of Todoist, which allows you to take your to do list and turn it into a view that's very similar to Trello, which is another app we'll talk about yep. in a little bit. Yep. So all of a yep. sudden you can have your to-do list as a visual card structure that you can move and drag. I mean, it doesn't have all the deep features that Trello has, but it's, you can see where it's, it's really cool. It, I mean, the, 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 the Mac app for Todoist, probably has a new version daily. Well, most of it's just bug fixes and tweaks and stuff like that. But they're constantly yeah. reviewing workflows and displays. And, and yeah, I mean, they're very, That's super uh, important very aggressive about continuing to upgrade. Some of these platforms I've used, they don't keep up on and yeah. they don't improve upon them. And then as you get new versions of the iOS or new versions of, you know, software for your Mac or whatever platform you're on. Um, sometimes they break or they don't work uh, the way that they should for, for to do stuff. And I'll definitely check out to do That sounds really cool. I've been using this um, software uh, platform called OmniFocus and it works Familiar really well for me. Um, I've used them for, I don't know, three or four years. Um, and I, I like visually how it's set up and how it's, I, I love crossing things off of a list. I just, yeah, so do I. Very, it's, it's very satisfying, yes. you know, to click the check box and have it disappear. That's right. It's accomplishment. Yeah. It's, it's just one of the life's little victories and I, and I like doing it. And like you, I love having an empty, uh, you know, I aspire to an empty email box. It's not always empty, but uh, you know, I don't, I'm not one of those folks. And, and I know people like this who have like 2000 emails in their inbox, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. I, so that's, that's kind of my, my go-to is, is omni focus. Um, and I, I'll definitely check out to, you know, and, and, and what I would suggest is, you know, to doist is my favorite. There's a lot of them out there slightly different features and displays and how they approach it. Find the one that works for you. I think the point I'm trying to make is you need a to-do app. You have to have a to-do app. You can't remember stuff in your head. You can't use your inbox as a to-do list. You can't use post-it notes. You can't write it on scribble paper. Use a to-do app. Find the one that works for you. Yeah, the last thing I'll say about the to-do app thing that is so useful is with these apps, you can prioritize things to your point, yep. but since it's digital and it's in text, you can move things around. Whereas when you have a list on, on a piece of paper, for example, you're crossing things off. 
then you kind of got to go start a new list and maybe reprioritize things. That's so much easier to do in a to-do app. And, 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 and I would add real quick, Todoist integrates with calendar apps. You can have your to-dos display in iCal, or I use, uh, I'm now using Fantastical on my Mac. You can have integrations back and forth where you can have a, 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 an event that you create in your calendar, dump into do, Todoist, you can put a Todoist task into your calendar so it shows. So there's a lot of integrations and trust me when I say it really will help you become more efficient in getting work done. And more importantly, it will help you to not lose track of something that was important. A yeah. call back, an email back, an uh, offer, whatever it might be. Yeah. I love the feature, and I'm sure Todoist does this, where you designate, you know, like this, this may not be a big deal right now, but in 30 days, I'd really need to take care of this. And you highlight it, you know, kind of like OmniFocus, and then it lets you know. Yeah, hey, kind of snoozes is, is, it. Yeah, this is coming yep. due at this time. Um, my my business partner, Jeff, uses, I think it's called Boomerang, where, you know, with email, where you get an email in that says, oh, you got to put together that marketing plan next month. Well, he just hits the button and it comes back to him next month. Yeah, Air, Air, Airmail, Airmail has a lot of functions like that, too, where you can take that email and just say, you know, nudge me in a week, nudge me in a day, nudge me in a month, and then it'll come back into your inbox at yeah. whatever period you specified. Super cool. So what's up next on your list? Well, the thing that I've been using a lot lately um, is the three kind of major for artists um, apps, you know, Spotify for artists, Apple Music for artists, and Amazon for artists, which is fair, fairly new, right? And initially it was only available um, through the app. And since then they've opened it up to um, the, you know, for your laptop, you know, web-based. Um, but I make it a point to look at that data pretty much every day because with all of these artists and with all these different tracks that are being released, I can kind of go in and just see what the trend is and see if something like last week we discovered a track that was taking off and we noticed it early because of these platforms. And as we've talked about before on the show, you can, if you're the artist or even if you're not the artist, if you're the manager or a team member, you can be added to the team to have access to Spotify for Artists, Apple Music for Artists. And Spotify for Artists and Spotify Analytics are now merged uh, together. So it's got a little increased functionality there. Um, but there's so much to learn about how is your music performing? You know, what is the source of stream? Is it people's library? You know, is it coming from playlists? Which playlist is it coming from? And they'll even break it down for you so you can see exactly what territories, what playlists, you know, what the behavior is. There's a lot to learn from those, what I call four artist apps. Yeah, I agree. Those, those, those are must haves. I mean, I've actually got a folder on my um, mobile devices and tablet called analytics and stats. And that's where I just throw all those apps in there, the, you know, um, Google app and, and anything that gives me data, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. that, that goes in, in that. Um, the next app that I've really kind of fallen in love with over the last year or so is called C journal. Now, again, this is cross platform. How do you spell that? Um, the letter C journal. Okay. So, and, and what it is, is kind of a supercharged contacts address book with a little bit of CRM functionality added into it. Mm. So for those of you who don't know, CRM, big fancy term, customer relation management. And in the big corporate world, the, you know, probably one of the the leaders, if not the biggest, one of the big leaders is Salesforce. There's, you, you, and you may hear this all the time. People are like, you know, are you expert at Salesforce? Basically, Salesforce is an address book with a lot of bells and whistles added to it <laughs> to track what that contact 
has done, said, plans to do, where they came from. You associate all this information. You manage them through this. Um, so in the past, you know, the simple address books that come with your devices are nothing more than just that. It's keeping yeah. an address. You can't like add person. any more information to it. And I was finding I didn't need a full-blown system like a Salesforce um, or even something like HubSpot, which is, which is another tool out there. I just wanted an address book that had a little more muscle to it. C Journal does that. So it gives you the basic contact information, but then it has, um, and I'll, I'll read it exactly to you as I'm looking at it here on my screen. It has logs. So I'm on the phone with a client or a potential client. I open up the CRM manager and on their card, I enter a new log entry that says, talk to them today. This was their interest, blah, 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 blah. Now, in the past, I used to keep all those notes in Evernote, mm -hmm. which is another great, amazing tool. Yeah, I use that but it you. was never directly associated to the contact. Uh, I had to like, okay, this was the note for this card. Let me go find their contact. Let me get their email. Now, the logs are right in the address book. You can assign to-dos, like call this person back in one week. Yeah, the to-do dumps into, integrates right into my calendar app. So now I've got a flag in my calendar app that says call. You can attach files to a card. You can create custom fields. Um, one of the things that I'm using heavily is they've got tags just like a tag anywhere on the internet. But I've created a series of tags like a new lead, uh, discussed proposal, submitted proposal, reviewed proposal, rejected proposal, accepted proposal. Um, were they a past guest on the podcast? Were they, and, and, and as a musician, you can change that to, um, you know, maybe it's something related to booking shows or a record label. But you can go in here and have the C Journal app just display everything that's a new lead. I so now, it. so now I just all idea. of a sudden here's a list of 24 new leads. Okay, yeah. all right, nope, don't need to do that. Oh yeah, I forgot about this guy. Let me nudge him. You can actually email right out of the CRM app if you wanted to. You can call right out of it. Um, I think it's, it's turned out to be incredibly helpful in keeping information associated to contacts that you need. Yeah, and, and, really smart. and again, you don't need a lot of the super bells and whistles that some of these CRM apps that you got a monthly subscribe to will give you. It's sort of like, I don't need all the Photoshop. I just use the Canva app right, for 90% right. of what I do. This is the same thing. All I needed was the ability to add some notes and some to-do lists to a contact. I think that's really great. I had a client who he kept a spreadsheet on his computer as he toured for years, and everybody he met, club owner, went into the spreadsheet. Who, what were their kids' names? What, what's his birthday? you know, what was his likes, you know, things like that, because we meet so many people. And then as they circle back to that town again, you know, he's got the information. Yep. Yeah, that would be perfect for C journal as you yep. do all these things, because then you keep this log because how many times have you gone in into your uh, calendar app? And you're like, Oh, I've got a call today with this person. Oh, what was that about again? You know, who is this person? Maybe it didn't say or whatever. Well, yeah, what was the last conversation I had with them? Oh, I can't find the napkin I wrote the note on. I can't find the, the post-it note. I can't find the note. What was the note's title in Evernote? I can't find the conversation bullet points. This is all right there. The other thing that I really love is C Journal um, syncs automatically with the native contact app. Because I was always fearful. I don't want to build up all these contacts in right. C Journal and not have the contacts app be 
identical because again, our the phones sync with the contacts app. That's where the data comes from. Yeah. Um, so one of the the great efficiency here is I get an email, new new contact in in Airmail. Airmail's got a little right click drop down. Add this contact to your address book. It adds it to the Apple address book, but because C Journal is automatically synced, I get a little pop up in C Journal that says, "You've got a new contact. Would you like to import it? Import it. Boom. There when it you is. Import it. What fields come over? Um, it's it's going to be uh, the email address. It won't import all everything from like a signature block, gotcha. but it gets the email address and most of the time." first and last name if it can figure it out from that. Yeah. Uh, and then I just import it. If there's anything else, like I got a phone number, okay, I'll paste that in. I'll add my tag that this is a new lead. This is what they're interested in. So that was another failure I had for the longest time was you get all these contacts in your, in your email app, mm -hmm. but they're not in your address book. So when you wanted to call somebody, you can't find them in your address book. So now you're frantically searching emails in, in, in your email app to find them to get their information. It's now become very fast and efficient for me to just boom, boom, send, sync, boom, done. Everything yeah. is over there. Yeah, that's super cool. I like that. All right, um, next up, there's a lot of apps that do this and I, I resisted for a long time, but I, I use this app called Speaky to just, it just converts text, I'm sorry, voice to text. And, you know, you can hit a couple of buttons on your Mac keyboard that'll do that. There's tons of little apps that do that. Um, but the technology has gotten so good. And because sometimes um, I want more of a stream of consciousness, like a conversation, I'll, I'll go into Speaky and I'll talk something through. Now I've got something as a starting point that I can cut and paste, adjust a little bit and, and send to somebody. And it's, it's a lot easier than writing stuff on a pad and then kind of retyping it in an email or into a proposal. Um, I've really gotten into kind of the speech to text uh, as part of my workflow. That, I, I, I love that too. I'm, I'm trying to force myself to get more efficient using the speech to text because more and more apps now have, Apple has, has since opened Siri up a lot more so other apps can access it. So you can create Siri shortcuts. Todoist has that stuff. You know, a lot of these apps have the ability to speak and add something. They may even have an iWatch app, which you can just click the button, add this to my Todoist calendar, blah, 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 done. And it's just automatically sent to your calendar. So yeah, I'm I, I'm big believer in speech. You know, it's, and it's starting to get, I think to me, the problem was in the past few years, if it wasn't an Apple built app, it couldn't access speech effectively. Now that barriers come down. I mean, I, I even just noticed in my Spotify app, they have speech control now. Yeah. Speech control like it was uh, an Alexa. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a, a lot of it out there. And like, like we were just saying, it, it's gotten a lot better. In the early days of speech, I mean, there were kind of skits on Saturday Night Live and Big Bang Theory and stuff because they weren't very accurate. Right. Siri wasn't accurate completely in version 1.0, nor should it have been. But over the years, these things are being tweaked. They're getting better and better. And now I can even say things that have jargon in it, and it's recognizing a lot of it. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Yeah. Yep. Um, my next app, I briefly mentioned just a little bit ago, Canva, C-A-N-V-A. Um, it's got apps and it's got a web-based um, app. It actually now I think has desktop apps as well. Um, think of it this way though. 
it's it's Photoshop, except it's only what you really use in Photoshop. Yeah. So if you're making things for your socials to post, for example, and you don't have a ton of experience with Photoshop, you can go in on day one and create some really professional looking things to post. Yeah. Can Canva has a free version and a paid version. I currently use the free version and it works quite well, but it's got I don't know how many thousands upon thousands of pre-built templates. You just go in there and say, I need to create a new Facebook header. Boom, it opens up a blank one that's the exact size. Twitter header, boom, blank one, exact size. Think of anything, a Facebook post, whatever it might be. You can also do custom dimensions. And then, you know, you've got, it, it comes with um, a library of a whole bunch of free to use images. Um, you can upload all of your own images. I got a ton of my own client images, personal images uploaded in there. And you just drag them out onto this blank page. And like Photoshop, it handles layers. So, you know, as long as the image is a PNG, keep that in mind, people, it's got to be PNG with a transparent background. You can start overlaying stuff nicely. It's got a text function, so you can put text in there, multiple font styles, sizes, colors. Everything you primarily would use Photoshop to do is all this does, and it does it super easy, super fast. I mean, I can, I can whip together a Facebook header image if I've got the assets yeah. in a matter of minutes yeah. and just download it. And I'm yeah. done. And then, and then it saves it in the library as well, which is nice. I don't have to keep the saved version on my desktop. It you keeps it's archived. It's archived in Canva. So now I can go back, take that one that said pre-order and change it to out now, out now. And it's done. Or I've got a new client. Let me just copy the, this old client's one, change a few images, change the album. Boom. It's done. Um, I it's so told, much easier to use. I it mean, it I'm is. Big, I'm a big Photoshop guy, but Photoshop can be like the cockpit of a jet. Yes, you know, intimidating. It has so much functionality. And I, because I'm a photographer, I do use a lot of that functionality, but not for a banner set. If I'm going to create what you're talking about where, you know, I want a 1080 by 1080 at 72 DPI that'll be used across all platforms. And then I want to go through the socials and do like new banners for you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. I mean, that can take you a long time in Photoshop. Now, yeah. I'm not a graphic designer. My brother is. He could knock that stuff out in no time. But I think what you're saying is this is – they've got the templates. They've got the sizes down. You can just go in there immediately and put this stuff together and, without having those Photoshop skills. And, and And beyond just giving you the blank template of the right size, they have probably thousands of pre-built templates – that are already designed, they look great, and all you do is replace that image with your image, and that copy gets changed to your copy, and it looks like a professionally designed and laid out yeah. banner. Um, you know, for what the vast majority of musicians are going to have to do, this yeah. is all you're going to need. And I like agree. I said, there's a free version. You can do this for free on Canva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good one. Um, the next one I wanted to touch on, I took a little bit of heat <laughs> from this one. I brought it up, uh, one time in a, in a forum online and, um, I got a lot of, uh, negative responses. So I want to talk about that for a second. The, the site is Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, yep. and there's also Fiverr Pro. Fiverr started off in, with the premise of, you know, you start like five bucks, hence Fiverr, and people will, you know, draw a logo for you, do a resume for you, help you with your Google Analytics, or I, I'm, I mean, we could talk for hours. There's so many different things, but it's a lot of, you know, um, independent people who will do things for you. And for me, I love it because let's say I want to do a composite image, but I want it to look like a coloring book, or I want to do some kind of photo treatment that looks 
you know, with many different layers, really professional, like a movie poster. They have all of these artists there that will do this, and they're not all five dollars. It starts at five dollars. Some of them, you know, could be fifty dollars, depending on the job. If you wanted, let's say, an intro to your podcast, if, gosh, it just anything you can think of, Fiverr is a really great place to go in inexpensively and try and maybe get like ten logos done right. for your band or, and I know the the blowback was, well, you're putting that designer out of business. And my argument is, you know, my brother's a designer. I don't want to take any, uh, anything away from him, but a professional designer like him, they cost a lot of money. And I'm not ready to do that for something that I don't know is going to get off the ground. It's kind of like Canva. I'll go in there and just create my own things. Right. So I would encourage people to check out Fiverr for whatever, you know, kind of needs that you have. Maybe it is, you know, out, they do, they have people on there that do album art, you know, and releases. Oh yeah. They, 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 they have people who will code and program for you. I mean, it's basically just a giant resource to find freelance contractors that do any sort of work you could imagine. Now, word of warning, there's a lot of people that will, try and sell you stuff like, oh yeah, pay me five bucks and I'll get you a thousand streams on Spotify. That stuff is in there. Don't fall for that stuff. Don't but there, I've used Fiverr as well, you know, um, for design work. I, you know, my three sides of the coin opening intro video clip was done on Fiverr. You know, I, I sent them, a, I sent them a logo, a description of what I wanted done. He sent it back. It's like, great. I couldn't have ever done that on my own. And I think it cost me like 25 bucks. It's like, oh, that's you know, awesome. awesome. Great. Now, you know, could I hired a local designer to do that? Sure. But it probably would have cost me considerably more than that. Right. And I guess my, my attitude is the person on Fiverr is also a designer. Maybe they're just getting started. This is how they're trying to build their portfolio and connections. And yeah. I mean, I, I, I see so, it as a whole different part of the business. You know, if, if you and I are producing something professional for a client, we'll probably use, you know, a video editor that knows what they're doing or a graphic designer like my brother or whoever. But so much of what we do is maybe it's for a, a developing artist, a DIY thing. Maybe you just want to get some ideas for your, like, let's say you're building a presentation for a pitch. There are people that are professionals that build presentations all the time. You know, there's so many different things that you can do there for very little money. And maybe you do get to the point later where you will pay, a, you know, a more expensive professional. But like we said earlier, there is Fiverr Pro, which costs a little bit more in general, but there's a little bit more of a, a vetting process for those uh, people. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've got no problems with Fiverr. I think it's a, a great resource when you need it. Um, let's, this will be my last one. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll do one more round here. Um, I, just a quick note. I won't get into detail, but Evernote still first and foremost, an incredible app you've got to look into. It's just, I always describe it as it's a hard drive for your brain. It just stores all this stuff that you can't remember. Yeah. Um, but the app that I want to end with here is Trello. T-R-E-L-L-O. Yeah. Um, again, there's mobile apps. It's, it's web-based. I think they've got desktop apps. It's an incredibly simple tool for visually managing tasks. Yeah. Is it a to-do list? I think at, at, at its simplest, yeah, you could probably, yeah. you could probably argue that Trello is but nothing more than more, a to-do right? list, it's but, it, project but it's, management yeah, it's project tool. management and it, and it takes it from a different angle. So if, if you've never been involved in, in companies or businesses where there's been a development team, they usually have something called a scrum, um, which is, you know, you might sit there and go, well, there are a bunch of people are standing around this giant whiteboard with cards that get moved from one row to another row. 
this this card is coming up this card's being worked on oh this card is done move it over to here write down who it's assigned to and have an update every morning visually that works great and and i even remember years ago when i was working in a company with a development team i'm like man how can i apply that to marketing because that's really simplifying marketing tasks back then trello didn't exist and these you know this was you could go to courses to learn the, to manage development through this technique but trello came out i was like wow this is exactly it think of it as nothing more than a blank canvas where you basically create you could either look at it as as post-it notes or little white cards po postcards and they're assigned to a different um to-do list basically you got a yeah. board various to-do lists one of them could be items to do items doing items yeah. done um but it can yeah. expand way beyond that and and the concept is what's in the to-do list isn't being worked on right now but it's a holding pond of what has to get worked on yeah. what's Don't in the doing yeah. means this is what's actually being worked on and you just drag a card from list to list to list as yeah. it's done and I use it now. I've extensively built out a music release Trello board that I use for all my clients that includes those basics, but it also includes lists where I um, keep track of great poll quotes and reports. You know, you can drag files into Trello, whether it's a PDF file or a doc file or an image. Here's my email report. So you can go back in and see the email. Um, here's here's assets. Okay, here's all of the approved photos and album cover and logos and stuff like that. And I will invite the client and the artist to join the board because unlike a to-do list, which can tend to get a little techy looking in management, Trello is all basically graphics. It's just like a card, a card, a card, yeah, you move. It's, it's very visual. Yeah. And then you just change the view from the card to a calendar. And now you can see all of the cards that have yeah. due dates assigned to them. Yeah. And yeah. nice, nicely Trello integrates with your to-do list app and stuff like that. You can automatically send tasks back and forth. So if you're looking for a more project management oriented tool, that is very easy to pick up and learn and free to get involved in, totally recommend Trello. Yeah, I've used it for a couple of clients and I'm using it for one right now. The only thing I would add to what you're saying is, and you touched on this, but I think it, it bears kind of highlighting that this is not just for you. This is fantastic when you have a team. team. Then everybody's on the same page with the latest document, the latest bio, press release, images. They're all there. Think of it in some ways, it's kind of like a more functional um, Dropbox in yeah. that all your assets in one place, but it's not a, like a spreadsheet. You know, as you described, visually, it's very appealing how you can move things around. But man, if you've got a team and you want to keep everybody on the same page and you don't want to do a lot of emails back and forth, like, hey, is this the latest approved image? Or, hey, did you get the final version of that, uh, that mix? No, all of it's right there, one place. Everybody has access. You can see what everybody's doing. It's, and there, there are other competitors to Trello um, out there, but I think Trello is the best of the bunch that I've tried. Yeah, one of the one of the great things in Trello is you can take a card, you can add a due date to it, so it adds it to a calendar, so you know the date and the time something's due. Maybe you can also assign the card to somebody. So if you've got a team member, yeah. you can say, okay, I'm assigning this card. I need the new artist bio, and I'm assigning it to you to get that new artist bio. Now that person will be nudged that they've got a task that's due and responsible for them. So yeah, it's, it's not really, a, it can get a lot complicated because there's a lot of add-ons you can plug into Trello. 
just take the basic part of Trello and turn on the calendar function, I think 90% of the people out there will find plenty of use for something like Trello. And again, it's on a mobile app, so you can make changes and view it on the go. It's desktop, it's cross PC, Mac, PC, Mac everything. Um, integrations with other apps, it integrates with Evernote, it integrates with Todoist. It's well worth it for, for getting a little bit more project. I, here's how I look at it this way. I use Todoist for my own personal tasks. I use Trello when it's something that there's going to be one or more other people that are going to be a team member of. They, they should be a sponsor, Michael. Just so everybody knows, none of these products that we're mentioning, we're not being paid to talk no, about of any of these. These yeah. are just our own personal things. Just, personal just things, and, 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 and quite honest, I mean, we don't get the apps for free. I'm, I'm paying for my premium Todoist. Mm -hmm. I'm paying for my gold level on Trello. Um, I subscribe to the Airmail app. I've paid for the premium Evernote functionality. Part of why, and it's not necessarily because there's a lot more functions that come with it, but these apps have become so incredibly useful to me and my ability to, to make money that I feel like it's the least I can do to spend 50 bucks a year to support the app that I live and breathe on. Yeah, yeah, helps you be more efficient. Absolutely. Well, I, I don't have any other big ones. I just had an honorable mention um, because I was playing around with it the last couple of weeks. So you may have heard about Music Tectonics, the conference, the podcast. It's really grown out of um, a publicity firm called Rock, Paper, Scissors, uh, run by a, a guy named Dimitri Vitsa. And they're really great. I mean, they, they tie in music and technology as good as anybody on the planet. But Dimitri put together this conference called Music Tectonics, and they did their first one last year. They're going to do one this year, um, you know, online. But they launched an app. And what's cool about the app is, and, and I'm really weird about not having a ton of apps on my phone, you know, that I'm not really using, right? I just want to have the apps that I'm using and get to them soon. So what's cool about Music Tectonics is with the app, there's a lot of cool resources to explore, but, you know, regularly Dimitri goes and does a live stream. And so my app will pop up a little notification, hey, Dimitri's going live here in a few minutes. And then I listen while I'm working. And if you, and it's really insightful stuff, number one, but then I'll type in a little note that says, oh, you know, I, I agree with you, Dimitri. I think that's really cool. And then he'll respond in live time like, oh, and Jay asks this. It, it's really super cool. And I've really enjoyed using it for the last two or three weeks. So just an honorable mention to Music Tectonics uh, app. Cool, cool. Um, I think the, the obvious, quote, homework question for this episode is what are the apps you guys – use, love, you know, what do you swear by? And even what do you wish there was an app to do? I mean, I'm, I'm, I love, like I said, finding productivity tools. Yeah, and, you know, maybe there is something out there we can dig up because I've tried a lot of stuff and I use a lot of stuff here, but um, I'd love to hear what listeners and viewers are using out there. Yeah, for sure. Discmakers.com. Use code FREEBIZ for ground shipping on CD orders of 100 units or more, $150 value. Quick shout out to uh, Hypebot, Bands Thank in Town. Guys. Thank you for the support. Uh, of course, to Discmakers.com and Bandzoogle.com. We appreciate everything you do so much. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button on Spotify. Follow us, iTunes, subscribe, leave a review and a rating. And that's it. We'll see everybody next week.